Aloha and welcome back to this week's episode of Ola Kaha Loa. Today, our theme is civic engagement. We'll be introducing you to some OHA platforms that have been created for civic engagement and also hear from some of our advocates in the community. And then, stay to the end because we have a special guest from Upcountry Piholo, and you don't want to miss it. Alice Silbanus, our digital and print media manager, will share with us kamakakoi.com, our platform for civic engagement. Kamakakoi.com is a cutting edge tool to shape community. You may ask, how does a website shape community? Well, the answer lies in Kamakakoi's three-part approach to help community get informed, take action, and spread the word. On this issues-based website, you can get informed on a number of important topics affecting the Native Hawaiian community, including ea, aina, vai, iwi kupuna, and even melelahui. You can watch a video or read an article about any of these topics. The video stories are told from the perspectives of those entrenched in the issues. So you get to hear their first person accounts of why the issues are so important and tap into the emotion of what is really at stake for our community. On kamakakoi.com, you can also take action by signing a petition or submitting legislative testimony. Or you can use the social sharing buttons on the site to spread the word with your social network. Our most recent Kamakakoi video production is Ho'i Kavai, Return the Waters, that tells the story of the Kalo farmers of East Maui who have fought for 30 years to return water to their streams to feed their lo'ikalo and their families. In anticipation of the recent Hawaii Supreme Court case, through Kamakakoi, we work to build awareness and support for the kalo farmers and cultural practitioners of the East Maui community who have stood vigilant in their pursuit for what they know is pono for their community and for all of Hawaii. Ola Naivi, The Bones Live, delves into the issue of the protection of iwi kupuna against desecration. We've also documented the return of iwi kupuna from Great Britain and most recently from London. Of particular interest to Ohana, who may be looking for good teaching materials now because of COVID-19, is the one-hour film Pa'a Keo Puni, The Real History of Hawaii. This animated film provides an overview of the political history of Hawaii, from the rise of King Kamehameha the Great to the illegal overthrow of Queen Liliuokalani. Pa'a Keo Puni shares the history of Hawaii that doesn't usually get taught in the history books. But knowing these facts are absolutely important as we move forward as a community. These films and more may be found online and are available for download. We invite you to visit kamakakoi.com to get informed, take action, and spread the word on the issues that are important to you as we work together to shape a community that is pono and grounded in Aloha Aina. And now to share with us more about the work to overcome the struggles in our communities is Executive Director of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, Summer Silva. It's a really beautiful story. In 1974, uh, grassroots community organizers, very much like the people we continue to serve today, um, envisioned a nonprofit that would provide voice and legal advocacy for underserved communities across our Pai'aina, the most underserved being Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian communities. And so for the last 46 years, we've been living out their dream, their legacy, and uh, representing communities and individuals um, in the defense and protection of their land rights, their water rights, their, the rights of uh, protecting ibi kupuna, um, the rights of practicing olelo Hawaii and other cultural practices. And we get to do that every day through the generosity of others, which I think is even more inspiring. I mean, we as a nonprofit, most of our clients are indigent. They would not otherwise be able to afford legal services, and it's through the generosity of others that make our services possible. OHA is one such funder. Um, we have funding from other private and public foundations, but the most giving um, that means the most to us is from our community folks who 
give $20, $50 a month or whenever they can. And all that goes to ensuring that another 45 years um, going forward, we will constantly be the voice and the advocate standing alongside the Native Hawaiian community. I think the big takeaway is that the rule of law applies to all, particularly when our public trust resources are at stake. Um, some 34 years ago, one of the most powerful and influential companies in the state, Alexander and Baldwin, sought permission from the land board for the use of our public waters and our public lands for their commercial profit. Um, for the last 34 years through the present, they've been the one company allowed to evade our state's environmental protection laws, while hundreds of other permit holders who asked for the same privilege um, dutifully comply. And so what was most impactful about this decision was that by the board to grant these permits was that it brought you know, grievous harm to Hawaiian communities uh, reliant on the resources that they were using uh, for subsistence practices, for cultural practices. And so the wonderful thing about our laws in this state is that they're robust and they protect the rights of communities like those farmers in East Maui and uh, their right to gather and practice culture. And so under the law, we were able to have that community stand shoulder to shoulder with a billion dollar publicly traded company to seek um, from the courts, from our lawmakers, from the trustees of our lands um, to hold people accountable to the laws that are supposed to malama this place and the communities that are dependent on these resources. And so we hope that that request is heeded because it's a fair and just one. It's, it's the right thing to do and it's long overdue. To malama our ivikupuna, care for our ancestral remains, has been a kuliana for this person for the majority of his adult life. He has volunteered fearlessly with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs so that we are able to bring back home all of our ancestors that are scattered across the Honua. Welcome, hale aloha ayao. E aloha, hale aloha, pehe oi. Maikai, aloha. And where are you coming from today? No, I'm actually coming to you from the rainforest in Panaeva. Oh, my kai, eo Panaeva, and the compound over there that you are on right now. Uh, aloha to the ohana over there. Um, so, you know, hale aloha, you have been in, you know, this, this kuleana, in this movement, you know, for the majority of your life, right? Um, what can you tell us? Um, what is the most important thing that you want to let the Lahui know about this kuleana of Malama Iwi Kupuna? Uh, well, let me start off by saying that, you know, aloha, aloha no kako, um, you know, my, my kumu who taught me these things are Edward and Pualani uh, Kanahele um, you know, from Hilo. And the lessons they taught us were then implemented over the past 30 years. So the, in terms of what's most important for our Lahui to, to understand, is that the act of caring for Ivi Kupuna goes to the very foundations of, of our identity as, as Hawaiian people. Um, as expressed by the, the term Oivi, yeah, it literally means of the bone. So when our Kupuna you know, identify themselves, they identify themselves in light of their ancestry, in light of those from whom they, they come from. So that, that, that indicates to you not just how they thought about themselves, but a responsibility to those who came before, a kuleana to those who came before. Um, you know, we called our homeland Kulaivi, uh, Bone Plain, that place where our, where our ancestors are buried. And, you know, one of the most profound, you know, phrases to refer to family members is Ola Naivi. Oh, yeah. uh, literally, the bones live, but it refers to people who provide care to our elders as well as those who, uh, who uh, receive that care. So, you know, the most important thing is to, under, is to remember that Evi goes to the very essence of who we are as, as Hawaiians. When we first started, we had no idea how, uh, what extent the problem of removing Evi Kupuna, disturbing Evi Kupuna was. Um, you know, we were dealing initially with the Smithsonian Institute, and we just assumed that that was the, the, the extent of the problem. And it turns out it, it was just a, you know, 
it was just really just scratching the surface. And then we started to understand and learn that um, they were basically uh, spread out all over the world based upon the countries that were in Hawaii in the early days of contact. We're sending ships over and ship captains who were under contract to collect um, curios, they called them back then. Mm. And, and uh, human skulls was at the top of the list. And so a lot of these ships uh, and, and uh, crews from these ships uh, raided and, and, and ripped off a lot of uh, um, burial caves, sand dunes that were openly exposed. I mean, we think the sand dune exposure problem is an issue now. It was an issue back then, mm. 100, you know, 100, 150 years ago. Um, and so that made it clear that the Puna uh, were, were all over. And so we followed national laws to repatriate and bring back home those Ivi Kupuna and Moipu that are in museums in the, in the U.S. Um, and then we also, um, not, not because of any international authority, but, but really based on Hawaiian cultural values and, and practices, we asserted them everywhere in the world. Uh, Scotland, um, England, Germany, France, um, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, um, Austria now. Um, to let them know that it's, it is not the absence of legal authority that prevents us from bringing home. It's a lack of understanding about humanity. And when, once you're able to explain that, oh, we're not here as a matter of right. We're here as a matter of duty. We're here as a matter of responsibility. I cannot exist as a Hawaiian unless I know our people, our ancestral people were, uh, who were mistreated this way. Are, are, are taken care of, are brought home, are respected, and are recommitted to, to the bosom of Papa Hanamu. Any last words you want to share with the Lahui? Yeah, you know, like, uh, a, a lot of the international repatriation work we've done, you and I have done, you know, has, has, has been, you know, highlighted recently, but, you know, the most challenging cases for me are the ones at home. Right. Because, you know, for, for whatever reason, People seem to dig in more at home in terms of resisting. Um, right now, we, we've been trying for the last decade to rebury 700 plus Ivi Kupuna at Koyaha'o Church. So this is a situation where we're not dealing with foreigners, we're not dealing with you know, um, archaeologists or anthropologists who don't agree with our, our cultural views. We're not dealing with any of that. We're dealing with fellow Hawaiians who do not believe um, um, or who believe that it's okay to, in mass, uh, disturb Ivi Kupuna for for a development, and right. and 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 what makes that tricky and complex, but beautiful at the same time, is that we all can reach the same resolution that allows all of us to mutually heal our kamaha together, and then when if because to me if we can do something like that, we can organize our lahui, we can get back on our feet, we can return to the high level of, of, of operation that, that our, our kupuna did. Um, but we have, to, we have to strengthen the ancestral foundation first. Otherwise, there's no strong foundation for us to stand on. Mahalo nui, hale aloha uh, for joining us and taking, taking your time out today, um, all the way from Panaeva, Hawaii, and out to the Lahui. So mahalo nui. Good job, Papa. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, of course, we have our special guest from P.E. Holo, but right before that, we'll hear about Aloha Rising, Vote 2020. Hey Tutu, try look this article in Kobay Olo. Hey, I saw that online already. Kavai Ola is online now at kavaiola.news with bonus features like video, photo albums, and 40 years of stories on our Lahui. Wow! You never know. Get with the signs, boy! There will be luau again soon, and family gatherings. There will be hula festivals, sporting events, and concerts. To help our communities when they come back together, respond to the 2020 Census now. Spend a few minutes online today to impact the next 10 years of healthcare, infrastructure, and education. Go to 2020census.gov and respond today to make Hawaii's tomorrow brighter. It's time to shape our future.
Paid for by U.S. Census Bureau. Can I get one new process of voting this year? I don't vote, bro. It's so easy. All you gotta do is register by July 9th, get a ballot in the mail, fill them out, send them back. No lines, no post stations, just you and your kuleana. The only kuleana I have is become the next big MMA fan. You think that's kuleana? Selena <laughs> McFarlane? Well, it's our kuleana, our right and responsibility. Before you represent Hawaii in the cage, make sure you represent your people with your ballot. They are the heroes, the helpers, working on the front lines. And here's one small way that you can help them in return. Complete your 2020 census today. 2020 census data helps our community plan funding for hospitals, clinics, and emergency services across Hawaii. An accurate count helps public health officials know who is at risk, and first responders identify the resources they need to protect our communities. Complete your census at 2020census.gov and help shape our future. Paid for by U.S. Census Bureau. And joining us now, we have Community Outreach Manager, Davis Price, and Community Advocate, Kumuhina, to talk more about Aloha Rising Vote 2020. Aloha Rising, Connecting Kuleana is an online workshop series that we're hosting on our OHA Facebook Live via Zoom and in partnership with Kanaiokana and others. And the series is really centered on discussing uh, mo'olelo, uh, centered around uh, civic engagement. And, and what we're hoping to do is um, help folks connect the dots between our cultural identity, our cultural values, and um, our role in kuleana to be civically engaged. Um, and you know, in addition to the mo'olelo, we also offer up uh, mele from, from kumuhina. Mahalo Davis. Uh, yes, the mele portion of Aloha Rising is to help inspire and uplift the na'au of our lahui. As we face the days ahead and we consider what is our potential to really impact our lives and our livelihood here in our homeland. So again, um, sharing mele aloha aina is to help get us into a frame of mind and a, and a place and space in our hearts so that we feel confident about extending ourselves beyond our comfort zone, in this case, uh, for Aloha Rising, getting out the vote, registering to vote, and actually participating in a system that no matter where we are and how we feel about that system, it's really about considering how much we're impacted by that system. Our Mele Lahui have served to be a driving force when our people felt that there was no hope at the, the time of great political change amongst our people at the time of the removal of our queen from a place of power against her will. Our people galvanized themselves around mele, mele lahui. Kaulana na pua o Hawaii, ku pa'ama hope o ka'aina, Hiki mai ka elele o ka loko ino Pala pala anu nu me ka pa ka ha And so, mele really sing to the spirit and the heart and the mind. And when our minds and our hearts are strong, the physical, the physical pain, the grief, trauma, we don't feel it as much. You know, it's important that we take some time to really talk to each other and, and, and take civ civic engage engagement uh, a step further. And it's not just about voting, but it's really about communicating with each other, sharing mo'olelo, so we understand why we have to be civically engaged. It's, it's, it's a different approach that I don't know that we've taken in the past where we're just saying, oh, go vote. Um, this is about understanding our kuleana to, to address, you know, um, a system or, or processes that are not working, right? And so um, I think that through these steps, when we, um, you know, as we share mele and mo'olelo with each other, we, we, we get an understanding of how civic engagement is really tied and part of our cultural identity and our values that 
we will not, not only be more comfortable, but much more confident as we go and, and, and exercise our voice in various ways, one of them be, being to vote. You know, and it's really important this year that we uh, uh, take advantage of the all-male voting system, which is brand new. So we won't have our normal, our, what we're used to in terms of precinct polls, where we go to our neighborhood library or school and, and, and engage that way. Everybody, everyone, will be, will, everyone will be receiving a uh, ballot in the mail, everyone who's registered. So it's important that we take the steps to register, uh, check to make sure your address is updated, and then be on the lookout for your ballots in the mail. Uh, the ballots will drop around July 21st, and you'll have about two weeks to fill them out and submit them. And, and really, I think we should take that time to talk story with our ohana and our friends when we get our ballots, you know. Um, I don't know if, what the status of social distancing will be at that time, but maybe having Zoom parties where we all jump in and, and online and, and talking story about um, our ballots and, and when we're going to, who we're going to vote for and, and when we'll, we'll submit them. And joining us now from up country Maui, up in Piiholo, in the beautiful rainforest up there, we have one of my dear friends and special guests here to talk about the resiliency of our culture during this time. E aloha mai keli'i, peho oi. Mai ka inoa, mahalo ao oi. Mai ka ino, i ko u iki aku ya oi. So, peha ko uka. Eh, no, mau no ka ka aina, mau no ka kana hele hele o keia aina nei, o pi iholo nei keia. Um, but yeah, regular, same old. A few years ago, OHA, um, you know, issued a grant and you guys were, you know, the, the lucky receivers of that, of that grant or won that, that grant opportunity for your guys' amazing project of creating a cultural center at Mauka, um, there on Maui. How, how's it going? How's the project going? You know, it's, it's going as best as can in these challenging times. Uh, you know, um, we are still in the permitting stage, but we're almost pal. We get one more thing to finish, and then you know, then we're we're gonna be semi shovel ready. We're gonna do it in in uh, phases. So this year is one phase. We hope, um, uh, which is the all the floor part, you know, all the cement moving the iron a little bit and things, and then that'll be the first phase. And then two more phases to come up in the next two or three years. So we're hoping that that's how we can do it. Uh, in the meantime, as best as we can in this, these times, we, 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 we still have our classes up there. Uh, we have our Ipu discipline we're going to be planting on Monday, um, practicing social distancing, but they have to know their Ipu planting chant. Um, it's on a good moon for that. So those kinds of things um, still occur for us. Uh, and mahalo to Oha for setting us on our path of that kind of learning. Um, ceremonial planting uh, from every kind of plant that you can think of. So, mahalo. No, so that's a, that's an amazing and it's a great transition because I want to ask you about that the resiliency of of our of our hula world um, during this time. How have you been able to kind of modify it and then still continue on with the different practices that you guys have? Well, I I think we're we're still you know every week we've been doing this for like seven or eight weeks already. You know, and so we are, we utilize several different kinds of platforms. So each of these platforms um, is pale in comparison to what right. we, are, we are so accustomed to. You know, hello, the many breaths, you know, we, we, it's, it's about the collective and it's about the Aloha Healo collective um, and getting all of that energy and feeding off of each other. And in this new medium, you know, it's been difficult and it's been challenging. Uh, but it's better than nothing because we have to ho'o right. mau. And if nothing else, us, us kanaka, you know, we are, um, we are, we, we utilize everything that we can to make sure that our students remain on that path of um, learning, you know, for our ike kupuna. And so if we have to do it via Zoom, if we have to do it via FB Live, whatever, the, whatever it takes, that's that's the end result and sometimes it works sometimes no work and we get frustrated and you know um but we've we've become accustomed to it now the big question is for me and for many halal is how halal is going to look after all of this right 
Yeah, how are we going to deal with the distancing? Um, if we are allowed to, to come together as a papa, as a halal um, live, when they melekahea in, you know, how are they going to stand? Do we use masks? You know, all, you know, all of those things, we have to answer those questions because right now we've been fulfilling everything as best as we can um, via um, social media and this kind of stuff. But, you know, how, how are we going to move along over the next several months when everything opens up and it's, you know, we've got to deal with that at some point. You know what? We're resilient. We make do with what have for the moment. I, I'm comforted, perhaps, um, knowing in the back of the back burner of my old man brain is is that this is not forever right yeah this is not forever yeah it's someday it's going to puka out and we can we can do what we normally did before um but it'll still change it'll evolve um as we move along the great thing about zoom and all of these kinds of things is that it affords it's not good for the collective in a sense um but it's it affords us individual work with students True. you know Otherwise, we, you know, when we're in the halal, I don't usually have that, you know, unless I'm training them for a specific task individually. But now I can go individual, okay, look straight in the camera, chant your chant, you know, and I do the book kind of hell thing, yeah, like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm able to connect individually um, more often through Zoom and through FB Live than I normally would in a halal situation. So that's, a, that's uh, positive. That's a great silver lining, you know, to this, right? We've been able to, and, and it shows the resiliency of our practices that we can adapt and we can see the silver lining in a lot of this, right? And another silver lining, I, I get to talk to you because I never <laughs> see you. Right. No? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Many of us are now actually forcing ourselves, and not, not even forcing, but because of this, this isolation are seeking out, you know, these conversations that we're usually too busy to have. Yeah, over time. So mahalo, <laughs> mahalo nui to you um, and all the work that you've done and how um, instrumental you have been into raising and elevating, you know, our lahui through your voice, um, through your hula, um, and through many of the activities that you've been um, been a part of in, during your entire lifetime. Keli'i, I treasure you as a friend and I mahalo you for being um, on here um, to share your mana or share your ike with the lahui today. So aloha to you and the ohana up there in, in Piholo uh, from us here in Ivile O'ahu. Aloha. Mahalo to all of our guests today and mahalo to all of you for joining us tonight. Hopefully you've learned something a little bit more about how you can get civically engaged with the betterment, for the betterment of our communities. Join us on Thursdays at 2 p.m. on Facebook and also on Zoom for Aloha Rising Vote 2020. And we'll see you again next week, Saturday at 6 p.m. here on KGMB. Thank you.